we're reaching out to you from Olumiri Waterfalls here in Ocean State. Exactly. When we talk about domestic tourism, honestly, Nigeria has got a lot of potential. Yes. This is a good attraction. That's but right. the point is, which of the investors out there is ready to turn it into our destination? destination. As this a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, this is a huge tourism product. It is. It is. All that is left here is to harness it. Exactly. Well, let me go catch some fun and don't you go away. This is still good there. Africa. Yeah. Don't go away. Domestic tourism involves the activities of residents of a given country like Nigeria, traveling to and staying in places within Nigeria. However, outside their usual environment, for not more than 12 consecutive months, either for business or leisure or other purposes. The drive for domestic tourism took a new dimension when the governor of Washington State invited the champions of domestic tourism team to Washington State. Representing the team were Gogi Africa, Otumba Wanli Akimbuboye of La Campagne Tropicana Beach Resort, African Union, and tourism friendly financial institutions, Sterling Bank. We on our part have been able to identify the three key areas for our economic development in Oshun. That was why we had the, the Economic and Investment Summit sometimes in November last year. And the focus has always been on agriculture, mining, and tourism. The first tourism asset we visited on arrival was the palace of the Atauja, the paramount ruler of Oshogu. Oshun Oshugbo Sacred Groove is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, believed to be the abode of the fertility and wealth goddess. Oshun, one of the pantheons of the Yoruba ethnic group of Nigeria. It is a long stretch of forest, inhabited by hundreds of plants and animal species. Strewn around the precinct of the forest are 40 shrines, sculptures, and artworks representing the cosmology of the Yorubas, two palaces, five sacred places, and nine worship points strung along the river banks. In the first palace, there's this first traditional stool that 
the reigning king sit on once in a year with the beaded crown on. Pray for the country, the community, and people in general. He must sit there once in a year. And that once is that during Oshun Sogo International Festival. So this is the, we call the courtyard, first, part, first palace courtyard. And that's the first palace. And that's a beautiful pavilion made from the state government. People have been great. That beaded crown that the cabbage wore. The cabbage wore. Yes. Is it the same one that has been passing from one king to the other? Or when you come in as a king, they get you your own? No. It's the same. The same, the same one? Yes. I mean, we are here. Everybody wants to see this is this. Ocean Shibo River. And in Yoruba, people will say, I want water. Here, we don't have water. We have halves. Agbo, this is Agbo. The tourism potential in the state of Oshun is not in doubt. My name is Osewa Kondi, and I welcome you down to Olumene Waterfall in Erinjisha. So the Olumene Waterfall is the home of Living Spring. And the Olumene Waterfall takes us from Efonhala, Yekiti State. That is the way origin of the water coming from. We have seven waterfalls, and the water takes us down from Efonhala, Yekiti State. We have three major falls here. And this is the first waterfall we are seeing. The second fall, we have, we have 138 steps to the second fall. Now to keep moving up to the next level, you will walk on the rock like monkey crawl to the seven falls. You can see those people, those man, is one of our villagers from the hall. And this water is a medicinal water. You can see the water falling, no stop anymore. No matter the rainy season, the water falling. No matter the dynasty is in the water falling. And here now we have two caves here. We have adult cave, we have children cave. So that's the cave. You can go inside there and take your shower. And you can feel the water fall. The more you echo, the more you shout, the more the pressure of the water increases and more. Go to the second floor. You can see the second floor is very, very high and very beautiful. When you get to the second floor, it's very, very unique. The third level is like jacuzzi. You can go over there and take your shower successful. So the back of the mountain, there are the villagers up there. We call the village Obake. That is the village. So now you can go from here to Ikogusi, Warm Spring, Idonre, Ikonle, anything Ikogusi, anything it is land, you can go from here. visited the Owala Dam with so much serenity and possibilities. 
the proprietor of La Campagne Tropicana Beach Resort, Otumba Olawale Akimboboye, had this to say. You know, when you talk about an attraction, attraction does not bring economic benefit. The most you get from an attraction is that people will come and they will look at the attraction, they will marvel over the attraction, they will be happy with the attraction, they will take a few photos. Then they might have $10,000 in their pocket um, and they go back because when they want a place to sleep, they can't find a place to sleep. Uh, those that travel for heritage or cultural tourism, they want to connect with the culture of the people, the way of life, uh, the ways of life of the people, and they can't. They will keep the $10,000 in their pocket and jump on the plane back to where they came from. But when you surround an attraction with people's culture, you arrange water experience here, you arrange industrial experience here, where people can come and watch and learn how to make palm oil. They can come and learn and see how we make our palm wine. And they can go home with a keg of palm wine made by themselves. They can connect with the village and learn how to do fishing. That is when you have a destination. You must then give them an experience that is different from where they're coming from. You don't want to create something that is a cheap imitation of where they're coming from. So you need to create something that is unique to the environment, that is weaved around the culture of the people so that the people in the environment can benefit from the trickle-down economic effect of that development. The commissioner further reiterated the government's commitment to enablement. The, the first role of government is to create an enabling environment for investment. This government is keen on that. You will discover that we are going from a very a little distance from uh, this village. First, under old ramp, the state government will be able to fix that road. Right, this environment will provide electricity to assist investors. In terms of tax, we make our place very, our state very tax friendly to investors. In all of these attractions, investment is key to turning them around. As banks, we don't know everything. We only know finance. We don't know tourism. So the first thing we did is to let's go and learn tourism from the people in the industry. Let's bring them together so that we can develop tourism. Now we're here. From what I've seen here, this is a ready site. Listening to the commissioner with the I mean, readiness of the state government to provide road, to provide um, I mean, um, electricity, investment, friendly climate, then the job is done. What next is to cement a framework with the private sector and let it start happening next week. Have you ever heard about the Yoruba Civil Wars? The Yoruba Civil War was an internecine battle that lasted for about 100 years. It was a period when alliances were formed by a different subset of the Yoruba ethnic group, including Ketu, found presently in today's Benin Republic. However, on September 23, 1886, the Kiriji Peace Treaty was signed by chiefs of Yoruba towns, including the prominent then Alafi of Oyo and Oni of Ife. This treaty, signed by the traditional rulers and their chiefs, brought an end to the civil strife in Yoruba land and the beginning of peace, brotherliness, friendship, and commerce in Yoruba land. Today, the place where the peace treaty was signed at Kiriji Misa, situated between the two communities of Igbajo and Imesile, has grown to be a cultural and historical tourist site. Here stands the venue where the foundation for the unity and cooperation enjoyed by the various ethnic subset of the Yoruba land was laid. 
You are welcome to the Confederate Side Command, the Kitikara Warrior Warlords. This is the encampment, and this is from the place where they control the fortunes of the Kiriji War itself. This place overlooks the entire battlefield, as we will see when we go up higher. There are three sentries. For anybody coming to see either the commander of, uh, in chief or any of the warlords, the three sentries, this is the first one. And it's, it was manned by a, a, a man called the. Uh, what did I What did I Adekaya Oja Enakobi Eko. He uses a flute to communicate with the commander in chief. The commander in chief has a chair. You will see it a carved stone chair. And uh, you don't just walk up to see him there without clearance from uh, Adekaya Oja. Adekaya Oja himself is not always alone. As you can see this place, uh, hundreds of uh, attendants, aides, you know, and other warlords, they usually sit with him. This is the Ogun Shrine. Before combatants descend into battle, they appropriate the god of Ogun here. And if there is anybody to be disciplined, maybe by execution or whatever, this is where it is done. Uh, the commander in chief is always there. It is only during such rituals that he descends to either come and perform rituals here with the high priest or to come and witness the execution of somebody who had been condemned to death. Welcome to the Agaogede Bay Spot. A stone chair was carved for the Ekitikpara for Commander in Chief. That was Omoba uh, Fabumi or Aralada who started the war. When Ogede Bay came, after eight years of hostilities, Fabumi vacated this uh, stone stool for him. So it became a Gaugedengbe. And this is from where they review strategies, they command the fortunes of the war. This left flank belongs to the Ikpaye. The Ikpaye were native Ijisha warriors who are always at the back of Ogedengbe and Fabumi. This right flank belongs to the entire Yoruba warlords who came to fight. Each of them had their own commanders because Ogedengbe or Fabume cannot know everybody. So whoever they want to use, they sit here in camera and the person is called either from that flank or from this flank. The development of tourism infrastructure is a capital-intensive project and financial institutions are needed to partner in this venture to turn potentials into reality. As a bank, 
we decided to look at the Nigerian economy and see how we can help the economy grow. Also, we can impact the life of our people, citizenry, pos positively. And in view of this, we look at some certain sectors and we call those sectors the heart of sterling. Heart is the acronym for those sectors. We have health, education, agriculture, renewable energy, transport. And some have told us that beyond transport, you can have tourism. And what do we say to them? We say to them that every of our five sectors actually is part of tourism. In view of this, we look at the tourism potential of Nigeria. And we discover that compare Nigeria to other countries in the world, we have the best potential for tourism. And one, it will help engineer the economy of Nigeria, our citizenry, both urban and rural areas. And also, it will help us save a lot of foreign exchange. So in view of this, we decided to intervene in the tourism sector. What I want to say in conclusion is, I want to encourage every Nigerian to appreciate what we have. 95% of Nigeria do, do not know 20% of great places in Nigeria. Instead, we spend the high-end foreign exchange going outside the shores of this country to appreciate what we have in our country that is even better organized in our country. This is the time for Nigeria. COVID has presented a good opportunity for us to promote domestic tourism in Nigeria. I am Shino Atilola, the Divisional Head, Retail and Consumer Banking, Sterling Bank. We are watching Midlife on Google Africa. Enjoy. Heading for a journey? Here are some packing tips that will change your life. Pack your clothes inside out to avoid stains. Pack two tops for every one bottom wear. Pack the heaviest items closest to the base of your bag. Put breakables in socks. Capitalize on empty space. To cap it up, choose a practical suitcase with standout details. Now that you're set, we say, born voyage. Travel Tips has been brought to you in conjunction with Gogé Africa Travel Club. <laughs>